umpama hamba dia dicemar manusia yang jahil ke tawa bumi yang tiada udara bagai tiada nyawa pasti hilang suatu hari tanpa disadari bumi tanpa lautan akan kehausan pasti lambat laun hilang Aku yang malang Dewasa ini kita saling merayakan Kejayaan yang akhirnya membinasakan Apalah gunanya kematangan fikiran Bila di jiwa kita masih lagi muda dan mentah kuliah hijau Lagi muda dan mentah kulihat hijau Di bumi 
ku kini di bumi ku kini This is an open letter from you and me together Tomorrow is in our hands now Find the words that matter, say them aloud And make it better somehow Looking down from up on the moon It's a tiny blue marble Or I thought the ground was then home Could be so fragile What about sunrise? What about rain? What about all the things that you said we were the game? What about killing fields? Is there a time? What about all the things that you said was yours and mine? Did you ever stop to notice? All the blood we've shed before Did you ever stop to notice This crying earth is weeping short 
To the world, look what we've done. What about all the peace that you pledged your only son? What about flowery fields? Is there a time? What about all the dreams that you said was yours and mine? Did you ever stop to notice? All the children dead from war. Did you ever stop and notice? Was crying on the sweeping shore.
Kematangan fikiran Bila di jiwa kita masih lagi muda Dan mentah kuliah hijau Lagi muda dan mentah kulihat hijau Di bumi 
ku kini di bumi ku kini This is an open letter from you and me together Tomorrow's in our hands now Find the words that matter, say them aloud And make it better somehow Looking down from up on the moon It's a tiny blue marble Or I thought the ground was then long Could be so fragile What about sunrise? What about rain? What about all the things that you said we were the game? What about killing bees? Is there a time? What about all the things that you said was yours and mine? Did you ever stop to notice? All the blood we've shed before Did you ever stop to notice 
This crying earth is weeping short. To the world, look what we've done. What about all the peace that you pledged your only son? What about flowering fields? Is there a time? What about all the dreams that you said was yours and mine? Did you ever stop to notice? All the children dead from war. Did you ever stop and notice? This crying not this sweeping shore.
scheme, translational research impacts on sustainable development goals. It is my pleasure to be your MC this morning. I'm Associate Professor Dr. Siti Nohaja Malatif, Coordinator of the Research Nexus UITM for Energy and Environment, Office of Deputy Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation UITM. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the Office of Deputy Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation, UITM, has always propelled the research community to accomplish excellent output. CSSR is a reflection of TNCPI's commitment to facilitate the publications of research and high quality journals and improve the visibility of researchers in both local and international stage. With the, with the post COVID 19 pandemic, CSSR 20 was held virtually cover multidisciplinary research from science and technology to social science and humanities. The conference track is divided into six areas, namely industrial technology, cyber, cyber technology, health and wellness, logistics and transportation, energy and environment, social creativity and innovations, and CSSR 2020 will be the new norm gathering platform for the researchers, academicians, scientists and practitioners from Malaysia and abroad to present their latest research outcome and share new ideas. Take advantage of the online conference sessions and stay interactive. To begin with, I would like to invite Associate Professor Dr. Rohana Hassan, Director of Research the Director of Research Management Center as Chairman of as Deputy Chairman of T20 to deliver a welcoming speech. Dr. Rana, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Haja is our MC today. Uh, yang berbahagia, Professor Dr. Muhammad Nazib Suratman, Deputy Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation UITM as patron of CSSR 2020. Emeritus Professor Datuk Dr. Abdul Latif Muhammad, Research Fellow Langkawi Research Center, University Kebangsaan Malaysia UKM as keynote speaker of CSSR 2020, Professor Dr. Kirsten Holmes, Dean of Research, Faculty of Business and Law, Curtin Perth University, Australia as keynote speaker of CSSR 2020, Professor Datuk Dr. Muhammad Tajuddin Abdullah, Fellow Academy of Science Malaysia, Institute of Tropical Biodiversity and Sustainable Development, University of Malaysia Terengganu, as keynote speaker of CSSR 2020, Professor Dr. Fatul Rahman, Rector of Universitas Negeri Semarang, Indonesia, Deputy Directors of Research Nexus, Renew, Office Deputy of Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation, dear participants and presenters of CSSR 2020, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and a very good morning. Alhamdulillah, praise to Allah, by whose grace and blessings, I'm standing here today on behalf of our Honorable CSSR Chairperson, Professor Dr. Nori Tawati Matahe, for not being able to be with us today due to other commitment. It is a true pleasure for me to welcome everyone to the 7th International Conference on Science and Social Research 2020, virtually organized by UITM Malaysia in collaboration with Universitas Negeri Semarang UNES, Indonesia from 9th December to 10th December 2020. I am also grateful to you, Dr. Professor Dr. Muhammad Nazib Suratman, our Deputy Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation, for all the supports given in making this conference a success. On behalf of UITM, I wish to warmly welcome and also congratulate all participants for their commitment in attending this glorious and invaluable online conference 7 CSSR 2020. It is also an honor for us to welcome representatives from universities. We have few universities that are attending with us today. Um, University Technology Petronas, Universitas Indonesia, University Kebangsaan Malaysia, Malaysia Nuclear Agency, University Selangor, University Science Malaysia, Tunku Abdul Rahman University College, International Islamic University Malaysia and Kuliah of Economics and Management Sciences, University Science Islam Malaysia, 
Universitas Negeri Semarang Indonesia, International University of Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and others to the conference today. Also, special greetings to our keynote speakers to CSSR 2020. With us, we have keynote speaker one, Emeritus Professor Dr. Abdul Latif Muhammad, a research fellow for Langkawi Research Center. Keynote speaker two, Professor Kirsten Holmes, Dean Research, Faculty of Business and Law, Curtin Perth University. Keynote speaker three, we have Yang Berbahagia Professor Datuk Dr. Muhammad Tajuddin Abdullah, Fellow Academy of Science, Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it is our first year of virtual arrangement. However, we are proud to host the CSSR 2020 with UNES. The Office of Deputy Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation UITM has always propelled the research community to accomplish excellent output and to facilitate publications of research in high quality journals, along with networking with both local and international collaborators. The theme for this year is translational research impacts on sustainable development goals, which is in line with the scope and objective of CSSR 2020. Along with this team, I really hope that our online conference can foster a culture of writing and cultivate research culture among participants and boost the quality of publication in uh, targeted journals. This virtual conference will cover multidisciplinary research from science and technology to social sciences and humanities. The conference track is divided into six areas, namely uh, industrial technology, cyber technology, health and wellness, logistic and transportation, energy and environments, and as well as social creativity and innovation. CSSR 2020 is a platform for researchers, academicians, scientists, and practitioners to present their latest research outcomes and share new ideas. Based on our records, we received a total of 148 submissions and 104 are accepted upon completions of review tasks. It is hoped that through this online conference will be a full online presentation sessions and exchange of knowledge. So lastly, I would like to congratulate the committee for successfully organizing CSSR 2020. We welcome everyone virtually. So with that, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Rohana, for the welcoming remarks. Now, we continue with opening remarks by our esteemed professor, Dr. Muhammad Nazib Surakman, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovations, University Technology Mara, to deliver his opening speech. Excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to all distinguished guests and participants for joining this virtual meeting of the seventh International Conference of Science and Social Research, CSSR, organized by the Office of Deputy Vice Chancellor, Research and Innovation, University of Limara, Malaysia. As someone once said, the show must go on. Not that this is a show, but I appreciate your efforts to be together virtually to participate in this annual conference. I especially would like to extend a warm welcome and thank all to the participants. This is actually a good step in the right directions to share interesting research findings 
and forge synergy between all of us for one goal we want to achieve. On behalf of UITM, I'm very pleased that all of us are able to be here in this conference virtually, despite the challenges posed by COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to convey my sincere appreciations to the conference chair, Professor Dr. Noritawati Matahe and her team from Research Nexus UITM and the Deputy Conference Chair, Associate Professor Dr. Rohana Hassan and her Research RMC, Research Management Center team for making these events happen today. I would like also like to thank all three distinguished keynote speakers yang berbahagia Emeritus Professor Dr. Abdul Latif Muhammad from UKM, Professor Dr. Kirsten Holmes from Curtin University Australia, Professor Dr. Datuk Muhammad Tajuddin Abdullah, Fellow Academy of Science Malaysia, and panelists, presenters for taking to participate from near and far in today's conference. Last year's conference, the CSSR 2019, was conducted physically in Penang, Malaysia, focused on the research and innovation for society and economy, and emphasized on the importance of research and innovations, which are important to the advancement of the society as it solves this kind of social problems and enhances society capacity to act. Building on the successful discussions on the last year's conference. Today's conference will address the climate change issues, biodiversity, socioeconomics, and livelihood prosperity by looking at the impacts of the translational research to the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, SDG. We never expected the spread of COVID-19 pandemic last year. COVID-19 has disrupted every aspect of our livelihood, the movement of goods and movement of people. However, the severity of disruptions has made us realize that the importance of economic growth and the prosperity in the region. It is timely and fitting to discuss the impacts of translational research to the 17th goal under the SDG so that we can fully understand its concepts, its significance to the humankind. This year, we are very fortunate and welcome the University of Negeri Samarang, Indonesia, UNES, to become the part of our strategic partner in organizing this conference. A special thanks to Professor Dr. Fatul Rahman, Rector of University Negeri Samarang, Indonesia, that has been very close to us through research collaborations since a few years back such as providing the mutual matching grants for researchers for both universities. The two days conference via virtual presentation will be a valuable opportunity and great platform for academics, industry, specialists, students, and experts to share the experience and research progress, plus the potential creating networking in their respective research topics. It is my hope that all presented papers will be accepted for publications at the recommended suitable journals. I believe this approach can enhance the quality of research, plus increasing the number of publications of our institution. Statistically, more than 200 articles have been published in the index journal since it was first organized. Lastly, I would like to express my infinite gratitude again to the organizing committee, the hard work and the dedication you put into this intellectual discourse would definitely benefit those involved and at larger scale and the society itself. With that, I wish everyone a productive and beneficial sessions in the CSSR 2020. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Mohamad Nazib for the opening speech. Now, we proceed to the first session for keynote speech one. I would like to invite Professor Dr. Farida Zuraina Muhammad Yusof, Professor 
in Molecular Biology and also Dean, Faculty of Applied Sciences UITM as a chairperson for these sessions. Professor Dr. Farida will um, introduce our keynote speaker one, Emeritus Professor Dr. Dr. Abdul Latif Muhammad. And actually, um, me and Dr. Farida are uh, the former students of uh, Prof. Latif at UKM previously. And welcome, Prof. Farida. I'm hand over the sessions to you, Prof. Thank you so much, Associate Professor Dr. Sri Hajar. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And very good morning to all distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, I would like to thank the organizer for entrusting me with this novel uh, task in introducing our renowned first keynote speaker. The Honorable Emeritus Professor Datuk Dr. Abdul Latif Muhammad is currently the Research Fellow, Langkawi Research Centre, Institute for Environment and Development Lestari, University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Datuk Dr. Abdul Latif is the Emeritus Professor at the Faculty of Science and Technology, University Kebangsaan Malaysia. I am personally honoured to be taught by Prof. Datuk during my first year degree in UKM years back. Thank you, Datuk. From these vast experiences and expertise, he was appointed as a fellow at Academy Science Malaysia from 2002 up to now, ex-member, chairman and president, board of trustees, WWF Malaysia, 22 to 2018, member and then chairman, Pulau Banding Foundation from 2007 until now. Emeritus Professor Datuk Dr. Abdul Latif was the Dean, Faculty of Science and Technology from 2003 to 2004 and Director, Institute for Environment and Development from 2001 to 2002. His research area is on systematic botany and biodiversity of Malaysian plants, biodiversity assessment and conservation of some offshore islands and highlands in Peninsular Malaysia, Biodiversity Assessment in Peninsular Malaysia and Revision of Vitaceae for World Flora Malaysiana and Flora of Thailand. Based on Emeritus Professor Datuk Dr. Latif's contribution and achievement, he was awarded with Merdeka Award winner for Environment in 2015, Tokoh Alam 2006 by University Putra Malaysia and Langkawi Award winner 2004. Prof. Datuk Latif had supervised a total of 37 PhD candidates and 53 um, master's candidates, written and edited a total of 96 books and proceedings, 692 scientific articles either as single authors or with colleagues on subject of biodiversity, floristic composition, biomass estimation, plant taxonomy, ecology. Of course, this list will continue. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome Emeritus Professor Datuk Dr. Abdul Latif Muhammad. The virtual floor is now yours, Prof. Thank you. What do I do? Can you listen? Yeah, the floor is yours, Prof. Okay. <coughs> Good morning, selamat pagi dan assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And thank you for very kind words about me. And of course, uh, I taught you the chairperson in when you were in first year. I couldn't remember when, but this is a new norm. Me sitting in my bedroom clad in sleeping pajamas and wearing a saru. I've never done this before in my life, uh, trying to give a paper of this importance to a rectangular screen <laughs> with some images uh, of friends and those I don't know on little screen. But nevertheless, Thank you for your invitation. Thank you for wanting to share some of my thoughts with you. And thank you for 
uh, this uh, opportunity and and the desire to listen to the old uh, talk about what do we do with our richness? What do we do with our uh, biodiversity? Everybody knows we are so well endowed, uh, so rich in biodiversity, and we have all kind of ecosystem for a sustainable future. What do we do? And of course, uh, I'm sure many of you listening in your office or at home or anywhere, possibly on top of trees in Sabah, <laughs> also in Guantan, is something that is close to all of you. So can we move to the next slide, please? Yes, I intend, this is my proposal to talk to you. I intend to make you understand a little bit make you appreciate and respect our rich and endo natural resources, namely the living uh, biodiversity, in particular the flora and fauna and the habitat ecosystem. Uh, of course, all of us know that, you know, from the shallow sea in South China Sea and Slap Malacca, we are rich in marine ecosystem and marine life. We've got rivers and lakes rich in aquatic life and of course the buff uh, in the terrestrial ecosystem and the habitat and all this to me augurs very well for what we have wanted to do for the last 50 years after in the past 60 years after independence i.e to develop for our socio-economic well-being but at the same time i believe strongly and i hope you are with me we have, we have to protect, we have to conserve our mega diversity. I keep asking myself, and I challenge many friends outside there, is development of Malaysia, our country, especially of natural resources uh, and biodiversity sustainable? Why, why can't I see uh, the, the, the whole of my, my slide? What do I do? Okay. Uh, our environment, as you all know, is very vulnerable. It's very fragile. You know, either the landscape or the seascape. And we are so rich, our natural resources. Some are renewable, some are not, like petroleum, gas. And biodiversity in particular, we are so well endowed we are so proud. We are one of the mega diversities, uh, the mega diversity country in the world, uh, among the 17, one of the 17. And we all realize that our population is growing. Now it's 30 over a million. And we, we need food. And we are now a net importer of food. We are so dependent on outside world for our food security. You look at our paddy field, you look at all the food production, it is on the way down. And our social amenities, which are so important to us, especially now during the pandemic <laughs> uh, period, you know, we can't go out, we can't go to many places and we can socialize in that sense. And the question I keep asking myself is, is our socioeconomic development sustainable? And I think politicians can answer this, industrialists can answer this, and I'm sure academics and students can answer this question. You know, we hope we are going green. We hope to plant millions of trees uh, in order to offset the CO2 uh, release. And, but the brown issues keep coming to our doors, keep coming to our towns and cities. And, uh, and again, we've got another pandemic called globalization, you know, making one world and this affects trade and this affect the flow of, of uh, econ uh, economic product. This even affect uh, COVID-19. It's because of globalization. You know, uh, it started in Wuhan in China. It, it has gone all over the globe. And, and to my mind, this affect our uh, style of living. You know, our environmental quality, some people say are going down. Some people say so-so. 
and our education are uh, getting to be very suspected now and you know there's so much uh, discussion in the in the in facebook and social media about this and public uh, are we concerned yes i am concerned you are concerned but the general public out there are they concerned are they aware of such issues and problems and to my mind this is only our environment we borrow from the next generation we live in it and we are going to live a few more years especially me i have a few months left but you young people are going to live many more years what about my children and grandchildren next slide please yes i mean looking at this picture so serene so pristine so beautiful can we go there now no because because of covid 19 but i'm sure what you see here of Konukinabalu, it is a world heritage site and I hope it will be there forever. Though the peak is slowly going up and up and up and up by by centimeters and the locality is going north and north by centimeters. Of course you, you and I don't know this. Next please. Next please. You look at that. I just came out from uh, I just came out from Pearly State Park uh on sunday you know looking at the canopy looking at the forest looking at the landscape like this you know it, it really soothes our eyes you know so this is to me it's a good living you know i saw hundreds of polish residents climb up uh the highest point in polish just to see uh, a beautiful landscape something like this next please well i love this place too but then a beautiful scene in the urban areas like this are so poor with biodiversity, you know, uh, except some towns and cities which have trees, which have flowers, there are bird life in, in them. Next, please. Looking at a river, uh, stream flowing with clean water soothes your eyes, soothes your mind. You know, again, I went to Police State Park last week and it rained. And you, you, you saw this scene, you know, fast flowing stream with clean water. It really pleases your, your eyes and your mind. And this is what I call good living. Next, please. Yeah, if you go elsewhere, uh, this shows uh, Tasit Chini. Uh, uh, artificial, oh, no, no, natural lake, and you know, UKM is responsible for developing a research station there. But to my mind, is the research station is research for the communities that are sustainable. Well, we started with Puha, we did some good thing, but now when the leader uh, has retired, I am beginning to see unsustainable unsustainability, meaning research done in a few years have not translated to the socio-economic of the indigenous people of the people around uh, uh, the Tasichini area next please you look at the cloud forest if you go to the Nubrinchang or Benting Highland or any higher ground Kinabalu and again this is what to me is an aspect of good living you can appreciate the beauty in you know, of cloud forest in our country next please Again, on the left, there's a Malia Basin. Top, top right, it is uh, a trail to Gunung Perlis in Tamanagri Perlis. And right bottom, it's just a canopy and the river of mangrove uh, ecosystem in Langkawi. Now again, to my old eyes, these are soothing, these are beautiful. These are these have aesthetic value. This is an indicator of good living, being able to appreciate, let alone the biodiversity inside. Next, please. Well, in our country, we are very lucky. We have all kinds of forest ecosystem, from the lowland forest to the high mountain in Kinabalu, in Gunutaha. We've got swamp forests all over the country from uh, you know, coast to coast, uh, to Sabah and Sarawak, we've got peat swamp forest, we've got 
riparian forests along the streams and rivers, we've got Kragnas and his forests and beautiful limestone. We even got, you know, I, I just came back from the Shima bamboo forest of Pelis, Gelang forest in Trangganu, Eklantan and Pahang. And there are so many ecosystem and habitat, you know, that really mean to us uh, reflecting our rich uh, ecosystem diversity. Next, please. Again, this is just to show on the left is the Danum Valley. Now, who, who have been there? You know, you, you, you wake up early in the morning about five o'clock and you go to the higher high point in the tower, you can see this beautiful one. On the right top, there's Malio Basin in Sabah again, but on on the right bottom, there's Tamanagara, a very old uh, Kualatahan area. Uh, not Kualatahan, yeah, Kualatahan area. So again, this to me are indicators of good li living, appreciating nature and their content. Next, please. Yes, as I said just now, in the shallow seas of our Slap Malacca, uh, the mud flat, we, we have a good diversity of coral, especially in Sabah, also in Tioman, in Langkawi. We have sea grasses in the shallow waters of Johor. And, you know, for the, for the ichthyologists, you know, we have got good fishes. And from coast to coast, as you know, there's so much development occurring on the coast and we still have some clean beaches in our country, clean rivers, clean stream, and our river basin are well managed, some of them at least. The mangrove swamp forest, we got to be very proud of the mangrove in Sarawak, in Sabah, in Matang, in Langkawi are well preserved and well managed and we still have got some friend, fresh water swamp forest in the east coast, the peat swamp forest in uh, Sabah, Sarawak, uh, in Pahang are well managed and we've got some natural and artificial lakes and we've got wetlands and island. All these are, to my mind, a reflection of our habitat and ecosystem community diversity, which augurs very well for what I'm going to discuss uh, in a minute or two for sustainable living. Next, please. Well, every economic development must or will have impact you know and we have seen over the years you know especially for my generation we have seen the, the, the changes in the pattern of landscape and seascape either directly or indirectly impacted by our development especially on islands and on the beaches you and i are believers in development we want development we want to be a developed country by now 2020 we have got to move our goalpost let's put it to 050 we we need to uh, be high income societies but at what expense I, I always believe that we must we will bring the impact but minimum to the landscape because we want our our ecosystem our habitat to be healthy and ourselves to be health, healthy and the country, I must say, have, uh, has adopted sustainable development for the future many, many, many years ago. But you and I, through social media, through whispers, have listened to so much damages, either legal or illegal, you know, uh, carried out by certain people that will ultimately affect and impact our uh, living style and well-being. Next, please. Yes, it is timely, very timely for UITM and for you know the organizers to look at this. You know, of course, this is not our doing, but we bought the idea. We have adopted this. And if you look from SDG 1 to SDG 17, what do you want? You can have all this. But these are, to my mind, are goals our vision you know of sustainable development if we can achieve all of them 17 my god this is sustainable world sustainable nation if we can achieve 70 percent of it or 50 percent of it good enough to me but then again every sector every uh i mean responsible 
uh, people in this country must look at this and see where do I play my role? How do, as an acad academician, uh, as scientists, as researchers, uh, can help to achieve this goal that the country has adopted? You know, I tell you, it is a mammoth task, but it is not going to be achieved in a year or two. It is a long goal. But, you know, as a uh, as uh, Professor Omar Nazib said, said, said just now, the show must go on. And I think we must take our first step. And I'm sure you have taken more than the first step in order to slowly achieve what we want to in SDGs. Next, please. You look at the species in this country. We are so rich. Well, we got an estimate of uh, flowering plant of 50,000, Sabah, Sarawak, and Peninsula. And we got the ferns. Uh, I had in 1997 documented this uh, 1159 species. Hopefully, it will increase. You know, for the Moses, for the peninsula alone, I think Dr. Young, uh, T.K. Young, in UM, Prof. Haji Muhammad, and Dr. Nick Hazrina had documented about 532. And then I think my student, Dr. Lee Gehi, is doing something for liverworts now, but like it. Uh, uh, the, there are no uh, takers yet for the algae. I think from Pansu, Chu, Pansu, Pansu, or Prof Pan has done so much on the algae and marine algae and fungi likewise. But the microbes, I think it is something that we have got to think about. Uh, the picture here shows uh, Livistona endowensis, which is just found in. Taman Negara and Darompin, Taman Negeri Rompin in Paha, Bukit Kemaman and Gunung Bau in Tranggana. It's our endemic, it's beautiful. And it was discovered, uh, I think about 20 years ago, now it has found uh, itself in ornamental garden now. Thanks. Uh, next please, go on. If you look at Nepantis, you know, last year and this year, my colleague and I have discovered three new species of Nepenthes in the Tranganu Hill. And we have published one species in Cubulitin and two species in Webia, showing what? Showing we are, Peninsula is rich with Nepenthes. I think we have 13 uh, species now with about 11 or maybe more hybrids. And still, to my mind, Kinabalu in Sabah and Borneo is a center of diversity. Now, to my mind, this is our heritage. Beautiful uh, Nepenthes, you know, to stay on and to live and to be able to sustain itself. Next, please. If you go to the mangroves, all seem to be smelly, the mud are smelly, the water seem murky, and, but you look at the flora, they are as beautiful as the non-mangrove, you know, and, you know, some of you may know that some mangroves are suffering from natural causes and of course some from uh, anthropogenic hands, uh, hands of men disturbing mangroves. Next please. All right, if you move to the animal, of course I, I'm not well versed with the animal. Likewise, uh, Prof Tadjudin, who is going to speak uh, today or tomorrow, uh, had told me that we've got 372 species of mammal. And I think we went to Manjung area, uh, I think during the, during the COVID-19, I think somewhere in March or April, my colleague, Dr. Juliana Sanawi, told me that she probably has discovered two more new species of bats. All right, 374, so what? And I think 27 are endemic to our country, meaning ours alone to share. Birds, I think the number more, it's more than that, more resident. The reptile, I think Prof. Nor Hayati of UKM had told me that you've got 268 species of reptile and 158 species of uh, amphibian, plus, plus, plus. Look at the endemism, the level of endemism. Uh, the level of endemism makes Malaysia as a mega diversity country. You know, we, are, we, we have been isolated from Sumatra and from, from Borneo for millions of years and but still connected to the mainland Asia, but our endemism level is so high. 
uh, freshwater fishes, and the list go on. But of course, my friends and homologies, uh, you know, you have a, a, a lot <laughs> to do with insects. One single wish group that we know very little now, except the butterflies, the moth, the dragonflies, but the other, the beetles and what have you, we have let, we have, we have yet to, to discern them. Next, please. Time is running fast. Uh, you know, the animal, we've got, we are very lucky. We have got 10 species of hornbill in our country. Mm, 10 uh, in Royal Bloom, in Ulumuda, 9 in Kenya, 8 in Sarawak. And of course, we are, we, we are very high, except we are beaten by the Philippines and, and Philippines and Burma, uh, which have 13 species, you know. So, of course, I think my my friend, uh, Mr. Yap, is looking at this issue of hornbill, uh, depending again on tree for nesting, depending on uh, the fruits of the trees and other plants for their food and, you know, and their breeding. So, can we protect and conserve our 10 species of hornbill. Next, please. For the mammalogies, likewise, you are concerned with the flying squirrel, you know, the rodents and what have you. Next, please. But what I'm saying here, the diversity is immense. But I must say, rodents and small mammals are facing uh, losses every day, every week, every year because of habitat loss and because of other losses normally done by human beings. Next, please. I purposely put this uh, in order to challenge some of you. This is a, a beautiful looking bat. But some of you may disagree with me. It looks horrible. But it has no name yet. Otomok occurs in Cambodia, occurs in Java and New Guinea. And a few years ago, my colleague, Professor Sharu Anwa and his gang caught this in Cameron Highland. And until now, it has no name. It has not been registered its birth in a way. So it has no name. So the zoologists must take note of this. Chairperson, please warn me when to shut up. Please stop. Next, please. All right, the gen genetic diversity, the molecular biologists, I think the, the chapters is molecular biologists. I think, to my mind, we are still at the state of infancy. We have yet to go into deep uh, molecular biology to understand the, the cladistic, the evolution of either animal and plant. Of course, uh, Professor Tajude, my good friend, has done so much in this, in this, uh, in this uh, aspect. But to my mind, with our rich mega diversity of flora and fauna, the molecular biologists have got, to my mind, uh, plenty to do, but this is not cheap. Next, please. All right, if you play with numbers, I must you know, confess that the species on the left are suffering so much because they have got some monetary values put on their heads. Parrots, hill miners are caught. Cobras, python, lizard, turtle are caught, you know, for sale. Butterflies, moths sometimes, beetle are caught, you know, for sale and for safekeeping. But I think you and I know pretty time have got so much in, uh, on their hand, you know, catching the culprit, you know, who make living out of this. Next, please. And this slide came from the commentary on science technology then. Uh, I think the figures need to be updated, but nevertheless, this shows you, you know, our richness, our endowment of flora and fauna, you know, either more than or about, you know, uh, I don't know when, we are going to have uh, a good uh, believable figures of this. Next, please. Yeah, and this slide has been circulated for more than 10 years, but it is still relevant. You know, the value, the benefits that we can obtain from biodiversity, 
either from the ecosystem services, which are so free now, or even the, from biological resources that, that give us food, they got, that give us medicine, wood product, you know, and even the social and aesthetic benefit, you know, research that you all do, education and cultural value. This must be translated. Uh, I use translated because the, the theme of this conference is translational research. This must be translated into socio-economic development, into sustain sustainability. You have got to give values, dollars and cents, in order to make them relevant. Next, please. <laughs> I always, I love this picture because it tells us that one of the prime movers of development is what you saw coming out from the forest. This picture must be 30 or 20 years ago, but today it is a rarity. Next, please. And also, this is still going on in some places. <coughs> you clear the forest, you clear the landscape, the hill, the mountain, you put the commodity crops. Well, jolly good. But again, I'm looking at the balance and I'm looking at the sustainability aspect. Next, please. You know, things like this are not common. They are quite rare. But if, if you remember during or after, during or after the Hari Raya or any festival, you're going to have this uh, management of the waste. There's so much waste. You know, you look at your street, your uh, promahan, your anywhere. There's so much waste. Next. You know, so waste management is a problem. You know, I've seen uh, in many states, in many towns, you know, you've got all this. Of course, the culprit may be your dogs, your monkeys, your, your rat, your flies. And this help you know to uh, you know spread many uh, infectious diseases as well, and this bring out so many things if we don't do a good waste management in this country. And this is a premier problem. I remember years ago, zero waste everywhere. I mean the, the, the billboard, zero waste, zero waste. Yes, we can achieve zero waste, but if we don't collect the waste regularly. We are not going to have zero, and our dumping places are in problem. You know, you want to have incinerators. Some people do not like them. Next, please. You know, lately, you know, of course, in my age, I only saw the one on the left. You know, being a Clantonese, we are prone every year, especially at this time of the year, to have the one on the left. On the right is something new. You know, the paddy field in Kedah and other places suffer from the one on the right. But of late, Tranganung having good flood, even Wilayah Kuala Lumpur having flash flood everywhere. What what are these telling us? There must be some, some solution to this flash flood and flash drought occurring in our country. Well, you can blame the climate change, but you, you can't change it. You know, climate change is going to stay and going to continue. But as a, a country uh, looking at sustainability, you must address this problem. Next, please. Yeah, looking at the sustainable development, all have a role to play. The federal government, the state government, the, uh, the local communities down there, the ministries, you name it. You and I, the university, uh, the NGOs, the NGIs, NGIs, I mean non-government individuals like me, passionate, all have a, a, a role to play, either through knowledge or through advisory capacity, and all of us are stakeholders to this game of sustainable development. Next, please. The implication is very simple. Our population is increasing and all need a place to stay, food to eat, water to clean themselves and what have you. 
the rural and urban migration is not that dominant as was in the 70s and 80s, but still going on. You know, people from the poor environment coming to the urban areas uh, to get jobs. And not to mention you know, the migration from our friendly neighboring countries and the foreign workers, uh, which to my mind now exceed 5 million in the country. All this put demand on our natural resources, our amenities, our everything. I'm not going to say this, but I've got to, to say, you know, some of the cases of, uh, of uh, spread of COVID-19 in Bangui area, you know, was attributed to foreign workers, you know, staying in amenities, I think what, 30 people, one room, something like that. It's not to augur very well for our 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 action to to uh, put remedies on this. And again, with globalization, as I said just now, with international uh, communities are putting pressure on our countries and through economic sanction or economic trading, you know, we are, so to my mind, we have got some uh, indicators to show that our environment our environment is declining in terms of quality, uh, pollution, smoke, uh, durable in June, and this all affect, to my mind, our lifestyle, our well-being, our quality of life. And we have uh, sounded many times, you know, the economy must be based on sustainable green economy, but the takes from the government and all private uh, industrial sectors has been very slow. And again, as I said, the brown issues, pollution, uh, waste management are on the increase, and petty crimes are also, you know, so so. Next, please. Okay, person, please remind me to shut up. These are some indicators, you know, that, uh, that, that uh, give us some indication about sustainable development. We've got new growth center, jolly good. The East Coast, the Northern, the Southern Sarawak, the Southern, good, great. And urbanization is happening is happening very rapidly. More or less, you know, Kuala Lumpur to Seremban is, to my mind, is con urbanization now. You can't separate them out now. And we we aim, we vision, we vision, envision ourselves to be an industrialized country by 2025. Now we are going to 2021. You know, you you got to put another figure there, 2055 or 2065 and beyond. The GDP are decreasing. Economic policies are there, but they are not helping uh, the poor and uh, have not, especially during this COVID uh, uh, period. I mean, last night my son was talking about how does the government help the poor and the have not, you know. Uh, on Sinar Harian, I think, last night. And we've got a uh, the five-year five, five year development plan, the truck is coming very soon. And our pattern of consumerism hasn't changed, but thanks to COVID, it has changed a lot. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, we have got to order our food uh, from home. And living in the new normal, to my mind, is, is, is uh, socializingly <laughs> uh, really depressing. But we have all a role to play. Next, please. I believe in this. I strongly believe in this. Our, our natural resources, our biology, our natural capital, that is ours. And nobody can take that from us. And we've got skill and knowledge from our education. So our human capital has done wonders. Our organization, our industrial sector, rely on our skilled human capital. Our manufactured capital, infrastructure on the increase. I think factories, of course, uh, don't mention COVID, but all these things have been going on very well, all this very well for our development. And our fa financial capital, of course, you cannot compare with Singapore, but we are doing really good until until the COVID, until corruption came in uh, last few years, and we are now in debt and in debt and in debt. I just wonder whether we are going to 
continue with our sustainable development. But this is political. I'm not going to, to discuss this at all. Thanks. Uh, next, please. Our protected areas stays, either in Sabah, in Peninsula, in Sabah, stays. Okay, we lose some, but we we can increase some. So it stays so far. Our protected areas in national park, in state park, wildlife wildlife sanctuary, uh, forest reserve stays, and we are fighting for more and more and more green areas. Next, please. An example, you know, I think you are familiar with this. I think our agriculture has done wonders. Our forestry has done wonders with the timber sustainability, with palm oil sustainability, fishery, fishery, uh, question mark. You know, we still, uh, uh, our cash, we still send over to Phuket and to Patani before sending back. And our food and tourism, our tourism suffer a lot. Uh, now, but then again, put away COVID-19. We have good example in sustain sustainability. We have gone into certification. You know, we have called for biodiversity conservation and try to minimize environmental degradation throughout. You know, and all state, without any exception, have played a very important role in this. And because I think all the chief ministers from three percent believe in this, but they cannot do it alone. You and I, the stakeholders, the students, the lecturers, the researchers, must be in position to help them understand, respect all these uh, good examples. The good one shall be followed. The bad one, make correction. Next, please. I pick out forest management in particular because, to my mind, uh, we have, uh, how could you say, developed or we have uh, exploited our forest to the maximum during the colonial days and after independence and maybe to the 60s, 70s. Now we realize we have got to do sustainable forest management. And I think the Jabatan Protanan, Sabah, Sarawak, and Peninsula have already adopted this uh, through their uh, management practices. Next, please. Again, I always believe, you know, the annual coup for Peninsula Malaysia is set. Of course, some state broke them for reasons that you and I understand. The Environmental Quality Act is in place. You know, uh, we have adopted reduced impact logging, you know, as an answer. We have monitored through all these new technologies. And to my mind, we have put the good practice there and through certification. But then, of course, all this promises so much you know to us but we we have got to be eyes and ears uh, so that our environment is kept uh, pristine and clean next please i believe in green economy you know and i think forestry agriculture and all others, uh, other resource uh, management agencies believe in this i believe in sustainable utilization Take some, use some, maximally. I believe in multi, the multiple use of all the product. And I believe in protection. And there's, there's so much technology these days uh, to, uh, to address this, you know. Uh, local communities have participated at all level. And this is very, very good and very interesting. Our regulatory and our monitoring mechanisms are in place, you know, especially in agriculture. But then again, with respect to food security, we still a net importer of rice, of onion, of vegetable, of fish, you name any product. You know, we are still a net importer at the expense of our dollars and cents. Next, please. Various methods of sustainable agriculture. You and I know, and many of you have gone into the uh, research into nutrient cycling, into organic farming, and into the use of microorganisms in culture. I don't have to tell you this. You know, you people have done fantastic, fantastic job in the last 30, 20 years. Next, please. Of course, tourism. We, tourism at one time was 
a number one, sometimes number two, sometimes number three, uh, earner, earning power for our country. And of course, minus COVID-19, Sabah champion all this. But tourism was mainly based on natural environment. People from Europe, America, Japan, China wanted to see our clean beaches, our forests, our our uh, mangrove, our mud skippers, our all those things, and our marine park. We have done wonders over there. We've got all the endowment, you know, and we have done wonders to promote. Langkawi in particular have done wonders, uh, being uh, a UNESCO geopark, attracted millions of uh, visitors. And all states are wanting, uh, are demanding for uh, what I call foreign income through ecotourism. But then COVID came, hopefully COVID goes, and I think we'll be uh, again on our right track to, to, to use our natural environment, which must be protected and constant, stay pristine and beautiful to attract people from uh, the countries which don't have this. We are endo. We are a stable country. We are a beautiful country. I think we can take advantage of this tourism, uh, sustainable tourism, using or based on natural environment. Next, please. Well, just to address something very important, you know, these are, to my mind, are indicators of our sustainable future, our lifestyle. It's changing and it's changing and it's changing, of, of course, for the better. And we need good housing. At present, my house is good, but I think 30% housing still uh, bad and there are still people without houses. What about the community security? I don't want my house to be guarded by guards everywhere. You know, food must be safe. And you know better than I do, some food are just, you know, you know, and the su sustainable supply of food, you know, again, we are not important. I'm talking about the safe and healthy living, you know. I think our average uh, uh, life span is on the increase, good. And our community health must be good. Clean water. Slango in particular is suffering from this, uh, I think, last few months on and off and on and off. Again, attributed to irresponsible uh, people. Clean air and clean environment, of course. Education for all and lifelong education. The creation, as I said, there's no amenities. Uh, we need to go places. Of course, I love to have no crime and to have no drug abuses, you know. And I believe, you know, even the crime attributed to the loss of my friends, uh, Dr. Wan Hassan, last few weeks, is attributed to I think drug abuses. You know, and you can add all these uh, what I call attributes to sustainable future on your own. I I listed some. You can go on listing your wishes. Thanks. Next, please. All right. The government, either federal or state, they got enough instruments, enough policies, enough enactment, you name it. We'll, there are too many of them. But the will, the will to do at all levels, the will to do at federal level, the will to do at state level, the will to do at the most uh, rel uh, relevant part is the uh, local communities. District must be there because you cannot rely on one. We must work together and be researchers, be educators like you, not me anymore. We uh, have a role to play to educate them, to advise them, to 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 translate our research finding, our knowledge, in order to help. They need our help. Believe me, they need our help. We are knowledgeable sector. They need our help. Next, please. Well, time is running out. Conclusion. Every aspect of our biodiversity, our environment, be it ecosystem, 
species, genetic material, to my mind, again, must be evaluated for its relevance, for its value, for its importance. We must tell the policymakers, the industrialists, the true values of this natural resources. Petroleum, yes. Yes, yes, you can give figures. What about uh, clean water? What about clean beach? What about uh, Chingal Basar in Tranganu? What about uh, beautiful lake? All this need evaluation. Uh, we must be able to scrutinize the benefits to the local communities. I mentioned Dasi Chini just now. When we set up the the research center that is really to translate our research to have the local communities. The orang asli there and the communities outside. Just like when we establish the Prabhupada Foundation, it's really to help the local communities in uh, Royal Blue State Park and Tamango area and also the the outside, the great district. This is the idea of uh, what I consider uh, environment, natural resources to benefit the local communities. Again, we must do more research. We must understand all the complex interrelationship uh, that we face in our research uh, objectives and endeavor. Of course, I must say throughout my years, over 40 years in the universities, there's so many obstacles. Some of them are political. We can't do anything about them. Some of them were economic. In RM5, I was a millionaire researcher. Now, RM11, my friends told me in UK, to get 100,000 is like uh, squeezing water from stones. And of course, social obstacle to make it relevant to the, our, our target, the communities, is difficult, but it's not impossible. We've got the data. We've got the knowledge, we've got the information. All these are important elements in BioD, you know, to translate to the sustainable future, you know. And we must support all policies so that we reach the target. Again, to my mind, environment, biodiversity, species, ecosystem have got their clock ticking and ticking and ticking and ticking and ticking. And I could say some of the species of insect are telling us, hello, entomologist, my tongues are running out. You haven't named me yet. You haven't understand my population structure yet. You haven't understand the interrelationship between me and other communities of insect yet. But these are all, to my mind, challenges, which, you know, uh, as uh, researchers, uh, it is a, a dedication, it is a commitment, to do the best we could in our lifetime. I think there's another slide. Next, please. Yes. Uh, I think sustainable Malaysia must not be jeopardized by, you know, lack of uh, will from the environmentalists and people who study biology, because all they support our livelihood. Sustainable Malaysia must be in harmony, in balance with all these factors, this aspect. Otherwise, we cannot move. We've got to be a smart player, but we must work in tandem with others. You know, we must give high commitment together with other agencies and authorities and commentaries and universities. To my mind, the individual, you and me, the groups, the communities, you know, can have a lot, you know, especially in waste management, in water issues, it is timely now in UITM or in Indonesia, all of us must communicate, must take action uh, for sustainable development and future healthy living for all. Because, you know, this is what a developed country aspires to be. Healthy living, healthy well-being. Is that my last slide? Next, please. Yes. I like to promise myself to work together with the next generation, younger generation. My time's gone. I retired, but 
my students are everywhere, my people are everywhere. We must work together to ensure the people who can do wonders, i.e. the government, the federal government, the state government, because they got the authority, the local district, they got the authority to do it, to implement, but they must understand the value and the benefits of BioD and the clean environment. All NGOs, all NGIs, non-government individual, must address this concern, must be aware. Let's protect and conserve our environment and our BioD you know, to ensure our sustainable future. I think that is my slide. The last one must be acknowledgement. Uh, who? Last slide. Yeah. Uh, thank you all. Thank you to the patron, my good friend, Professor uh, uh, Razib, to the chairperson, to the deputy chairperson, whom I don't know, honestly, uh, to uh, the the chair, the chairperson now. Uh, well, we, we just saw our images on the screen. And I think Noor Nadia has been communicating with me. I think she is smiling now because I kept telling myself, how do I do this? How can I speak to the rectangular small screen? What is the link? But luckily, things work out, work out very well. I had my daughter to do everything for me. And I just sat here with my pajamas and Sarong sitting on the chair in my bedroom, you know, <laughs> shouting to you. And I hope, I just hope, you know, the next generation of researchers and educators get some benefits in order to address the sustainable goals that I put down here, the 17 of them. Don't do all, take your pick, take your pick and do with your friend, address them, uh, you know, as something lifelong to achieve. You know, thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. And I hope you get some benefit from my renewable slides. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wabillahi Taufiq wal Hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. And if the chairperson could spare some question, I don't mind, uh, you know, answering them if there is time. Yeah, I saw a picture of my friend, my good friend, Muhammad Nazik. Thank you, sir, for inviting me to share with you. Yeah. He's, he's still smiling forever. <laughs> Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Prof Latif, thank you very much um, Actually when I'm communicating with Nadia um, When we ask for your slide I said that when those days when we in your class You never have a slide for lecture actually Isn't it Prof? <laughs> you just sit there for two hours and talk and talk and talk And, and also um, ask us to go to all the national parks uh, With you I've been to Endau Rompin, to Belum to mangrove matang pera, you know, and wildlife conservation, sleep with seladang, and all that kind of um, biodies uh, research. And it's actually a very uh, nice experience. Uh, I think uh, we have an, around half an hour, so we can open for Q&A. Yeah, Prof? But there was the days. Uh, there was the yeah. days, you know, there yeah. was the days. Yeah. My, the my, are different. Yes. I and was, now things are getting different. Yes, it was different right now when because it was new norm. Every, everybody is um, talking to the laptop <laughs> without seeing each other. And um, maybe it's, it's quite hard <laughs> for us to go out to the forest, you know, uh, to the rivers. Um, it's, it's quite hard actually because we are, I, I, I mean, I see it captured in our own house. But it's a new norm. We have to get used to it. And um, I think I will... I was so like, nervous, I must say. Yeah, Prof? You, you are not nervous. I am so nervous. <laughs> what do I do? How do I do it? You know, because you know, in, in class or in normal conferences, you, you got the audience. You can you can have a eye contact, body language, you know. You have a you know, joke to share directly. But here, I saw images. I saw you. But I saw Nazi, Nazi there. But... I don't see, I don't see a body language. I don't see, you know. Yeah, it's, it's I feel so nervous, honestly. <laughs> I won't do it. 
Okay, yes, Prof. Please. So, uh, yes, I yes. think I open Q&A sessions now. Uh, I will ask Prof. Nasib to ask the first questions, Prof. If you have any questions <laughs> or suggestions to Prof. Latin. Uh, thank you, Dr. Siti Haja, the chairperson for uh, this morning session. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Dr. Latif, for accepting our invitations. And also, thank you for such an insightful talk and very inspiring, actually. Thank you again. Um, Dato, um, <clears throat> when we, uh, you mentioned um, briefly about the SDG, and especially when we talk about the SDG goal number 15, yeah, Dato, uh, life on land, yeah, which says that uh, we need to protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystem, you know, like reversing land degradation, yeah, pre prevent from biodiversity loss. And, you know, you mentioned also, uh, our time is almost up, you and me, you know, uh, we may be running out of time. So uh, to the younger generation, Dato, the younger uh, budding researcher, um, any insight, Dato, on what are the priority of the research in order to complement the goal number 15, life on land, to protect the biodiversity and to reverse the degradation and, uh, and also promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystem, Dato? Uh, thank you, Saudara uh, Professor Ahmad Nazib. Uh, thanks for everything. Uh, before the COVID era March last year, I think, or rather yeah, last year or 2018, I was so happy when Dr. Sri Azmi chaired uh, a couple of meetings uh, on sustainability or on SDGs because I think SDGs uh, were put under his ministry. Uh, there were a couple of meetings. I attended one meeting and I was so really, uh, put it this way, excited because the commitment from Dr. Sri Azmin then, 2018, 2019, was so real and was so transparent. But then there was a chain of government and there was COVID, and now there was no discussion again on the implementation of the SDGs. But we have got a very good instrument with us. I call it the, the, the BioD policy, the National BioD policy, which was, which, which was launched in 1998, not implemented to, to our satisfaction and revised to 2015, launched again to 2016, now four years. Now, this document, two documents now, the 1998 document to 2016 document are so beautiful. It contains so much uh, action plan, it contains so much strategies for all of us to do to, uh, to, to, to do and to implement. But then again, it has not been socialized to all the states. BioD environment belong to the state. The BioD of Kelantan belong to the state of Kelantan, the BioD of Sarawak belong to the state of Sarawak. Therefore, the state authority, the state government, the state district, uh, the, every state must be able to have something to implement that. Because federal can't do anything. Now, in that document, you have strategy, you have action plan. Uh, I hope everybody has got a copy of that. Uh, another. Go through it and find out your niche. Now, as researchers in all the universities, including yours, uh, uh, Prof, we have got to able to, to, to go through the document, translate, what can we do in our learned uh, capacity to address part of it? Now, I'm a taxonomist, so I'm addressing what I consider ecological dynamics, uh, species uh, diversity, taxonomy, and I think, Prof, you are a forester by training. Again, you can address forest biodiversity, forest ecosystem, and the molecular people can address likewise. And I think if you put one, two, four, seven, nineteen together in clusters as you have now, and meet every week, discuss every week, uh, what have you done? What have you achieved? What shall we move on to the next level? And again, talk to the states. They are the main stakeholders. Talk to the ministry, talk to, talk to the states, talk to the districts, and say, look, we've got a thing. I think the thing uh, you, you did for uh, Tamanagara Kenya, 
there is an example where you bring all researchers together to one place and try to generate data, information, something of uh, of Tamanagara per se, of Kenyan river system, and go now to the government, the state government of Pahang, tell them, or go to Pilita, look, I've got this. I've, I've translated uh, this information to something which may be of use to you, to your policies or to your management. And I think, of course, you got to publish the work as, as researchers. So I think it's good, uh, Prof, you, you, you're a deputy vice chancellor now. You are in the best position ready to garner, to bring together young people, talk to them nicely, uh, entice them to work hard, to do uh, something meaningful to the societies, the universities, to have an impact to the next generation. Now, I did what I did, but I didn't know what was the impact. It's only now you, you praise me, you say good thing about me, but then I was doing my job. And I don't have a, a, a counselor, I don't have a motivator then, uh, prop. But I think you are in the best position in, in, in the years you have, uh, I don't know how many more years, you are still young. Uh, you can motivate, you can make groups, and you can talk to them, you can really support them to, to, to be a good researcher, to be well known sometime in the future, but more so importantly to work with the state. Now you have campuses in all the state in Malaysia, uh, then work with them. You cannot work in silo anymore. We have been blamed for years. The university lecturers, the professors, they bought shots and degrees again. They publish, they publish, they publish, they publish in a promotion. But the states and the industrial people, the private sector are looking at you, hey, you did so much, you spent so much government money and taxpayers' money. Have you translated, you know, this to make some meaning to the local communities, to the state policy, to the state management, to the common degree, to whatever, you know. So I hope, you know, that is my line of thought, uh, Prof, that you can really play. And I hope the young people uh, who are listening uh, take the cue Mm. Don't 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 let uh, don't don't wait for Prof Nazib to call you. Go to him. I have something to do. Can you bring me together with other friends of the same niche and work together? There's no time now except to work together. And I think you have got clusters in not not COVID clusters, but I mean uh, research clusters in your university and other universities have got the research cluster working group. I, I mean, I, I have been working in group ever since, and it helps a lot. And I think there are many more groups that help each other a lot. But more importantly, make it make your research more relevant because otherwise you'll be blamed by taxpayers' money, by the government, or of something short a day. You know, <laughs> I hope I, I have uh, deliberated something. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Rato. Truly appreciate it. Thank you, Prof. Nazib. If uh, any participants have questions, yeah. Yeah, Dr. Saleh Jaim. Oh, Saleh. Saleh appears there. Saleh ada janggut putih. <laughs> Saya pun dah tua juga, Patih. <laughs> Assalamualaikum, Patih. <laughs> Waalaikumsalam. It's good to see you uh, virtually. It looks like you are in a good health. Alhamdulillah, Dato. So you have always been my you always been my sifu and my my mentor, Dato, in this thing on biodiversity. I have two questions, Dato. Just now you mentioned about uh, um, the contribution to the community, involvement of the community into biodiversity, and uh, you touch. about that in the policy, in the BioD policy mentioned about uh, the the involvement of community, uh, like the clause on community conserved areas. But I would like to take your attention that we have that in the policy, but in, I may say, all our conservation law in the country, in all conservation law in the country, regardless of any wildlife law, forestry law, 
or, 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 or state park law or whichever con conservation law, mm -hmm. there is no mentioning in the law on the on the on the on the part of involving community in the law. That's why the government agencies always see that that is beyond their authority. Every agencies work with their 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 law and their jurisdiction. That is why there is lack of participation or lack of commitment by the government agencies in working with community regarding to biodiversity. That is one question, Dato. The second question is, um, you mentioned about yes, it's a property of the state. Sometimes the property of the state may be, be, may be uh, treated uh, uh, contradictory. I would, I would love to, to take this example and, and I'm, I'm looking for your opinion. For example, now there is a move uh, of, uh, from the state government of Pahang to, to, to take over Taman Negara. <laughs> Kan perbadanan Taman Negara. I've understand that uh, Perhilitan has done a good job since 1936 managing Taman Negara until now. Of course, there are a few glitches here and there, but is it a best solution for state government to take over a biodiversity hotspot or to manage the areas accordingly? Those were two, my two, two questions, Dato. <laughs> Terima kasih Datuk. Thank you. Insyaallah jumpa lagi di hutan. Saya ni saya ni dari tepi hutan juga Datuk di Berang Hulu cari lain. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Mak Saleh. Uh, two two big question that require big answer. The first one, you see all policies all an all enactment all act uh, are instrument uh, established developed by the federal government in tandem with the state government for what? For the people. So you mentioned about uh, an inability of the state government to understand such things because in every around or in the vicinity of every protected areas or forest reserve, there are communities. Be they orang asli, be they orang Melayu, uh, who depend, who have, who have been depending and will depend and will again in future for, you know, the fruits, for the commodities, for the rattan, for the water, for everything in the forest. You know, there is a concept which Sabah and Sabah had done wonders. You know, they make the people as stewards, as custodians of the forest, of the state park, of the wildlife sanctuary because they are there. The agencies are outside in Putrajaya or in Jalan Ceras or in area, but the people who live around or inside those areas are, to my mind, the custodian, the, 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 the steward. For example, for example, lodging now is so popular with Rafesia viewing. You know, the benefits that the people collected from the visitors must go to the local communities who are safeguarding, who are uh, stewarding the refugee population in lodging. And I think the similar example must go for all the Taman Negara, Taman Negeri, uh, Wildlife Sanctuary, and other protected areas because they are the stewards. And I think about the Perhutanan, Perhilitan, and the state government must understand this. And I think it is our duty now to make them understand. This is translation research. To make them understand the benefits uh, to and fro. We get the benefit from green research. The communities get the benefit and the community will support the state government. The community will support the, the district. Now, your number two is more interesting because, well, put it this way. It is a strange thing that Kamanakara, as we understand it, was enacted in 1938 by three states from the three sultans of the three states. And now Taman Negara come under the patronage of three sultans of three states, Kelantan, Terengganu, Pahang, and Tuluya Mahamdiya, Yandhi, Tuan Agong. See, there are, there are the pyramid, there are three states and one Agong. Now, and it belongs to every state. There is the reason why, Saleh, 
14 years ago in 2004 we put Taman Negara as uh, a list to be you know to be protected and to be as a world heritage site and after 14 you know, 2004 16 years now it doesn't move because the three states have their own agenda to do Kelantan dengan dia punya bahagian Merapu, uh, Terengganu dia punya apa ni Gagau uh, area dan Pahang as you know your area and three years ago my friend was commissioned to do a study can Pahang take out Taman Negara sebelah Pahang menjadi Taman Negeri diletakkan di bawah perbadanan Taman Negeri just like Taman Negeri Rompin and just like possibly of Bukit Fraser because the state wanted uh, the resources to be managed and all benefits, all value, all monetary return must go to the state. Now, you, you may question, is this the right move? Is it the right track? But this is my land. Unlike Taman Negara Panta Aceh di Pulau Pinang, that is enacted by the uh, the enactment baru Taman Negara under Peritan. Taman Negara was enactment 1938 under King George V under three states. Now, as I said just now, it's, it is so sensitive because every state wanted to have the resources to be developed for their values and their reward. You know, economic development, whatever you call, call it. And federal was silence on this. You know, and I just pray and hope that this thing won't happen, but it may very soon. I remember one ESCO member a few years ago of Pahang was adamant in really carving out Taman Negara Sebelah Pahang itu menjadi Taman Negeri and put under perbadanan, just like Johor. I hope it will materialize so far, but my friend who did, and you know who, who did the, 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 the who, who was commissioned, who did the, the study, of course, you got a pros and cons, you know. But I wish, honestly, I wish Taman Negara stays as our Taman Negara. After all, we have got only two Taman Negara and Pata Aceh as really Taman Negara under the federal. The rest all under state Taman Negeri. All in Sabah are Taman Negeri. All in Sarawak, Taman Negeri. Johor, Taman Negeri, walaupun ada di family negara there, you know. So, I hope so, so, uh, let's pray that it won't happen because we want Taman Negara. It is a, such a pristine uh, area of 43,000, 43 kilometers square, full of wonders in ecosystem, habitat, and the flora and fauna. Though very unexploited, unexplored, because you know it's a big area, and also under threat from the. <laughs> the foreigners who came in for <laughs> for the wildlife and also for garden. <laughs> Do we have the time? Thank you, Prof. We have one question at chat box by Cik Bon Ahmad. Assalamualaikum, Datuk Latif, Prof Nazib and everyone. How do you see conservation of biodiversity in the urban area? Thank you. Oh, thanks. Uh, Again, uh, four years ago, Dr. Naim uh, at the Kementerian realized the importance of biodiversity in the urban areas. Because we've been saying biodi dalam hutan, biodi uh, mangrove forest, biodi dalam laut, but you know, our countries are developing and so many urban areas are sprouting from Perlis to Johor to Sabah and Sarawak. And we keep saying, Oh, they are poor in BioD, they are poor in BioD, they are poor in BioD. So that Dr. Naim, I remember four years ago, uh, started, uh, I would say, commissioning some studies. And I was called in and I proposed to Dr. Naim, let's do a pilot study, I see. Let's do some studies in Kota Damansara. The, uh, the Kota Damansara, uh, community forest is just only 313 hectares on it, but surrounded by you know what, the highways and the Promahan and everything. Now let's find out 
what are inside and how do they react to the, all the pressures from outside, the pollution pressure, the noise pressure, and the encroachment pressures. And, and, that, uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Naim uh, agreed that, and we have done some study on Kota Damsara. The other one we proposed was Bukit Bau Urban Forest in, in Jungu, but the government has no money. But you look at Bukit Nanas, just 9.8 hectares, you know, lung of Kuala Lumpur, you can call it. And I think the biodiesel there is, is reasonably good, you know, and, and, and the list can go on in, in other states, in Johor, in Perak, in Pahang, in the urban areas, to know, I mean, to my mind, biodiesel is not just planting trees in, in Bandaraya or in Banda, like in Shahalam, beautiful, it's not that. But we must bring back the biodiesel to the city, just like Singapore. You know, what Singapore created corridors, you know, that connect every part of Singapore, such a, a developed city, so much green, so so many corridors, and the birds came in, the insects came in, the wildlife came in. And to my mind, Singapore thinks that is good, good living. You know, so Kuala Lumpur is a good example, but except for Bukit Nanas and other patches of uh, of, of, of of forest, but there are many examples elsewhere that can create a good study to understand the biology of develop or developing uh, town or cities to understand, you know, as you know, you can see when you planted uh, you know, trees that bear fruits edible by birds, many species of birds came in. But you don't want monkeys alone to come in. But okay, monkeys is part of biology, but, but you, you need what I consider, put it this way, you and I sometimes were from Kampung, and we saw what uh, life of Kampung good stream river, luck keeps saying, we jump into the river, and there are birds, life, there are insects, there are snakes, there are small mammals. Kadang-kadang, kita nak imulik balik. But I must say, people increasing 11, increasing 18 Putrajaya hate this, because the kera kacau dia, and even uh, Biawa kacau dia. <laughs> so there are so many rope kills in Putrajaya. But it depends. I, I think I think uh, Professor Datuk Tajuddin will talk about the human uh, uh, animal conflict, uh, whether shall we go on conflict forever or shall we coexist together for what I consider our future sustainable living. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. I think that is uh, end of our Q and A sessions. Um, when Provlati mentions about um, Damansara Community Forest, actually, the there are one paper published by Dr. Kadicha and Dr. Azila from UM. It was uh, been uh, actually referenced to my class uh, for insect uh, insect studies and. They, they do have found the communities of insects that relates with the three that we found that they found in the Damansara. So when we're talking about biodiversity, we're not talking only about the tree or the animals, but we are talking about the species diversity and compass of all living living organisms, different kind of plants, different kind of animals different kind of insect species and all of that combined together it will become a very a very uh, rich biodiversity so i think um, malaysia is blessed with one of the richest and diverse tropical biodiversity in the world so uh, to be honest i'm very happy you, you brought this matter because look at the Daman, kota damansara urban forest uitm is quite close yes um uh, uh, is close to another university jauh sikit lah. So, but I think if there are researchers looking at this, you know, yeah. it helps a lot uh, for the local, uh, for the communities around that who have adopted Damansara, Kota Damansara as their uh, community forest to understand what is one important, not only the diversity, but how does the flora and the fauna react to the pressure? As I said just now, the pollution from around, the noise from around, and the certain amount of degradation there, uh, I think climate change and what have you, and 
it augurs very well for the name community forest. But if you ITM and you end, after they are close to you, what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or USM, that time. <laughs> Inshallah, bro. Inshallah. Uh, so uh, I think um, with, with that, many of us here will be interested in explore and expanding the countless research in biodiversity and ecosystem for sustainable future. Like what Prof mentioned before, there are national policy on biological diversity 2016 uh, until 2025. They, they mentioned five goals, five yeah. key principles here, which are heritage, precautionary, share responsibility, participatory and good governance. It was very well written. Yeah. But, but how we want to take action on that? how you want to emphasize on it um, and enforcement should be taken uh, and maybe um, researchers, local governments and agencies should be relook back at the national policies that are actually very well written uh, what we should do next. Translate them. Yeah, translate them and do actions. Yes. Make some actions. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I think uh, Professor uh, Latif, thank you for the for the speech and i think that is the end of our sessions this morning okay. uh, i'm thank to all the guests prof latte prof nasib and the participant for joining us this morning on behalf of the organizer i would like to thank every one of you for the participations i hope all we enjoy the today's conference um and then i would like, would like to remind all participants to fill in the attendance form uh, through the link given at the chat box for the certificate. All right, and we will continue to the parallel session A at 10.45 a.m. All presenters and participants can check the link of each session in WhatsApp group for each track given. Any questions regarding the presentation sessions? All presenter and participant can ask directly to the secretariat of each track. Thank you and enjoy your virtual conference 7 CSSR 2020. With that, I'm signing off for this morning. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.